I'm Eric. And I'm Steve. Battle Bond. Bonanza. Let's talk about it. Welcome, Planeswalkers, to the Collector Mania YouTube channel, uh, and thank you for joining us for episode number 32. As normal, of course, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. If you guys are already subscribed, hit the bell, and then uh, share if you think we're worthy of your playgroup, that sort of thing. Um, so, Battle Bond is in the works of being fully spoiled. Full swing. So, want to break into it? Sure. All right. Well, first, first, before we go any further, you may have noticed our tans. Yes. If you did, are not aware, we just got back from Florida. It was an amazing trip. It was a good time. I had a great time. Mm -hmm. oh uh, yeah ate lots of fish i uh there's a little bit of an announcement yes um, it's true is, th is this a good place to yeah say? go okay. for it i am now employed by collector mania which is awesome something that i was waiting for. i mean i wanted for a long time so that's really cool and mm -hmm. now i get to work with eric all the time yep. so i hope he's ready for that yes i will be um <laughs> you know so uh yeah stay tuned i guess like yeah, we'll, we'll be doing room. a little bit more like shop life at that point because I'll be here all the time, so that yeah. means we'll be together a lot of the time yeah. and we'll be able to kind of like record the shenanigans that go on here because yeah. there are some shenanigans that yes. go on here. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, cool. with that, let's yes. break into it. Awesome. So uh, if you guys haven't seen, Battlebond looks nuts. Uh, yeah, it, it is Commander Masters. I don't know. They should have just labeled it that way. The cards in here are absolute bananas, especially the, like the new cards. Like yep. the reprints, like blow my mind already. But the new cards are just like what? Yeah. So uh, the way we've got this organized, Steve pulled these files. We have first the new stuff, right? Yep. Then the partners, and then what's... the uh, crazy reprints. Okay, yeah. And then we there may be a segment at the end of this where we grab some images of the newer cards that get spoiled around nine o'clock today. We have to shoot this episode a little bit earlier than that, just because I got to go to work right after this to you know work <laughs> so um anyway like i said there might be a little bit of an awkward jump at the end where you'll see some cards that we should, probably should have gone over previously it really depends on what comes down today so far we've seen guafa hazid is the only thing that's kind of notable for commander at least yeah. but it, it'll happen as it happens yeah. anyway first up we've got arena rector people are losing their minds over this card and they should be uh, there's a huge thing with vintage like switching this between like academy rector and then arena rector instead of grabbing your omniscience you're now grabbing like your nickel bolus or so on and so forth if you have not read the card it's when arena rector dies you may exile it if you do search your library for a planeswalker card put it onto the battlefield then shuffle your library this is to my knowledge the only effect that does that yeah um you know you think of the ones that'll the new ones in the planeswalker decks that'll search it for you or like you know return a permanent from your graveyard that could be a planeswalker or something but it's just like yeah, um, you think that's not a very s steep hill to climb. No. Get a 1-2 killed after yeah. you play it, <laughs> or cheat it into play or something. like. And that's what I think most people are trying to do. Like, figure out a way to cheat it into play, and then have it sacrificed to an effect, and then go get that Planeswalker. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is going to be nuts in Commander, but like I said, it's got a, a lot of applications in Legacy and Vintage, yeah. which is where I think... What will unfortunately drive the price. I know that somebody was saying that it's already pre-ordering for like $35 or something like that. Foils would not surprise me at like $100 at this point. Yeah. Because people are going to go nuts about this. And there's actually a really good reason too. So yeah. just hope you open one of these, I guess, because buying one's not going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think these, especially, you know, if you're a commander player after foils like we are, like, I think this compares to like Conspiracy 1, Conspiracy 2, where you've got like... Dak Faden or Scourge yep. of the Throne or Savala Green, like all of those cards that are only in that set as mythic foils will be not so. And then yeah. this card, like you said, there is no substitute. Like, yeah, it's gonna be. I think you're right, a hundred dollar foil. It'll the, be nuts. The closest thing I can think of is the portal that came out in Kaladesh. Yeah, that you pay eight mana for. Or, yeah, pay eight mana and then you can pay six to go get a permanent from your library or and put it into play or something like that. Yeah, and that's not even like in no. the ballpark with this card. No so. Anyway, uh, we'll stop, stop gushing about this one. <laughs> it's a, a good first pick for sure. Oh. And then we've got Together Forever. So that's two white. It's an enchantment. Uh, whenever Together Forever enters the battlefield, support two. Support is a mechanic that we have seen before, so it's cool that they brought back an uh, yeah, a more interesting one, I guess. Yeah, this comes block, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we've got Pay One Colors. Choose target creature with the counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to, the, to its owner's hand. Mm -hmm. So recursion in a way. Yeah. 
And this is the angel demon duo, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. And a lot of people have talked about like, well, what's what are these guys' relationships? Uh, they're clearly lovers, um, yeah. <laughs> which is interesting. I yeah. mean, it kind of reminds me of Diablo. Yeah. You know, in that way where like you've got like I can't even remember the names, but anyway, there's like a love love thing going on there too. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's weird to see an angel and demon together that way, like I guess story wise, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's different. It's neat. And this plane seems all about what's different, you know. Yeah, and it's not like. You know, normally on a normal plane, these guys would be trying to kill each other. Now right. they're just fighting. They're fighting to make money or fame or whatever, yeah. prove something. So, definitely a cool card. Uh, next, we've got play the game for six and two white sorcery assist. So, other players, this is a new mechanic. Other players can pay up to six, like the colorless mana cost here, um, to help pay this for you. And, of course, exile all permanents. So, this one, these assist cards are going to be pretty wacky and pretty diplomatic. I know... I've often made deals with people to say, hey, if you can ping this target with your Staff of Nin, I'll finish it off with my Staff of Nin. You know, like, this is just one of those, uh, let's work together to defeat the greater good type cards. So, see, what do you think of the assist overall? Um, it's cool. There's a few cards at Uncommon that I actually kind of like. Um, the rare cards, obviously, are bonkers. Mm -hmm. This one in particular, like, you're gonna find that I guess partnership especially yeah. if like one person has really or one or two people have really taken off like you're gonna get a little bit of like leeway as far as okay i'll pay four mana of this that way yeah. you don't have to pay it's all half, ten right like, eight <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean it's a cool cool idea i love the political aspect of it because you know that is definitely something that we bring into a lot of our gameplay it's just like well we need to attack this guy because he's yeah. being a jerk and now so. if we can exile i mean this this is obviously a almost reset of the game yep. like you definitely don't want to do this unless you absolutely need to but yeah i think you could convince somebody if it's that bad hopefully yeah i wish it said creatures but yeah. non-land permanence is it's really good really good but yep. it's scary at the same it's time because really it's just like i don't want to exile my own crap like, yeah your own know. rocks your own whatever everything you know but if you have to you have to so you do. uh next uh we've got regna I'm guessing that's the way we should say Regna? 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 Regna's Regna. Sanction. Yeah. Uh, three colors and a white. For each player, choose friend or foe, which this is an awesome idea, in my opinion. <laughs> each friend gets or puts a plus one, plus one counter on each creature they control. Each foe chooses one untapped creature they control, then tap the rest. Oh my gosh. So it's a good, like, yeah, I'm going to swing at everybody kind of thing, especially because you get to choose. So, I mean... If you are kind of partnering up with somebody at the table and you just want to finish one player off, you can be like, okay, well, we're going to make all of our creatures buff, so I'm going to swing at him, and then you'll swing at him kind of thing. Right. Or vice versa, if you're playing two at a giant, which is really what these are designed for, you can help your buddy out and also hurt your opponents. Hurt both your opponents, yeah. Could you, in a multiplayer game, name yourself as a friend? I'm assuming you are. it's automatic. Like, for each player, yeah, yeah, yeah. for each player, choose friend or foe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you'd choose Foe, but right, I but guess there's an application maybe somewhere for that. Yeah. Boy, that card is nuts. Yeah, there's a few of them that are just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Super cool, pretty straightforward, like you said. Just, yeah. you know, pull somebody's shorts down and then, uh, you know, beef up your team, essentially. So Cool enjoyed. artwork, too. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I love those four-winged angels. Like, those are always mm -hmm. interesting to me because it's just like, well, it's not my typical angel, I guess. It's kind of a twist, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, we've got Brightling, which is part of a cycle of lings <laughs> uh so one and two white shapeshifter three three so for a a white uh brightling gains vigilance for a white he gains lifelink for a white you can return him and then for one you can get you know plus or minus until end of turn so pretty sweet that art is awesome it is pretty cool like the colors in there are just like Wah. so where we where we have torchling aetherling brightling thornling is there a like a blackling that i'm missing i don't think so so maybe that's the yeah. next one we're looking for yeah. that's cool i'm i mean that, this card it doesn't speak to me necessarily for commander personally like i could see it maybe in 1v1 but that's where i put most like super low converter mana stuff yeah. uh, as far as like a, once again like regular commander i don't really i guess see too much of a use for it it's cool but i, mean, I think that card could really run away like yeah you're right it's very it's kind of lean, I guess. Yeah, it's too small. Yeah. And the plus one, minus one, like, it quickly becomes Runs a problem. Yeah. Like, two activations and you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, making a, a really, uh, even like a five one or something 
lifelink to keep yourself alive. Although, could work with Tetsuko. <laughs> oh my god! White, blue, Tetsuko, brightling combo! Yes, perfect! You'd have to make a different commander, though. That's true. Raph. We'll use Raph. Yes, Raph. So, kind of a cool one. I don't know about a mythic. Yeah, Maybe. it's a little rough. Yeah, but... we'll see. Uh, you grab this one. <laughs> Arcane Artisan. So, two colors and a blue. Human Wizard, zero, three. It has an activated tap ability, so two colors and a blue. Target player draws a card, then exiles a card from their hand. If a creature card is exiled this way, that player creates a token that's a copy of that card. When Arcane Artisan leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens created with it at the beginning of the next end step. Interesting. Very interesting card. Um, it's a little risky for me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just being like, well, I gotta discard this guy, and now I have a token copy of it that could go away at basically any second. Any time, yeah. Well, I guess not really, because it exiles at the beginning of the end step. So that's a little bit it's of leeway. Around, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of lukewarm on this. I, maybe not a mythic? Yeah. I mean, maybe we're dead wrong. I mean, that obviously is powerful, but... Well, it depends on what you're doing, like yeah. what you're putting in. Like, I could see, like... A Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, like that, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll do. Um, but once again, well, I guess you could do that on the end of the person before you turn and then get that Blightsteel token and then swing and kill somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, there there's applications for this. It's not necessarily a card that I would enjoy playing mm -hmm. too much because it's a little bit too like eh. yeah, too many hoops and too too risky of a yeah and you know of a play. I think I'm so much of a graveyard player that when something says exile my own stuff I just automatically I'm like nope yep so we'll I, see I'm thinking like what's that Miss Hollow Griffin like yeah. how could you make that work with a card in exile or like squee or something but Eldrazi yeah like yeah that. kind of odd kind of cool obviously there's some power there but maybe like you said, a little uh, out of our wheelhouse for how well, we play. If there, were, I mean, <laughs> this is going to magical Christmas land. If there was a way for you to gain infinite mana and then infinite untaps, you could exile people's libraries completely out because you could just continually make them draw a card and discard a card, draw yeah, a card, exactly. discard a card. Yeah. That's probably why this is so like tame because they didn't want like that kind of yeah. thing going on because it, it almost has to be a tap ability because that's you know <laughs> if you just make infinite mana, you just exile yeah everything so boy it's uh, i don't know yeah it's different <laughs> definitely different i'll leave it there uh next oh you know what you want to try this i one? don't even know how to say that <laughs> zinder Zind. we'll call it zin judgment I, I think it's zinder splits judgment right yeah. Zin, zinder split zinder, zinder splits judgment so he's another one of the fliblit guys oh no he's actually a homunculus i looked into that isn't the other guy a homunculus no he's a whatever you just said oh a he's a yeah this is a homunculus i i, I went a little because after you had said that i wonder if he is and then i kind of did a little bit of research and homunculus is actually a big creature type in this i guess plane, plane okay because there's only like two that are actually like printed as cards this being one of them but in the plane they're actually kind of relevant so okay. uh so zinder splits judgment four in a blue sorcery for each player choose friend or foe each friend creates a token that's a copy of a creature they control each foe returns a creature they control to their hand so yeah another one kind of that was really good yeah it's really good i mean if you think about it it's uh like a what is it called um i can't remember it's from kaladesh it's uh baral's expertise or something like okay. that where it bounces back three things three permanents and then you get to put a uh, permanent with like four converted mana cost or less into play like yeah. this is almost it reminds me of something like that because you're bouncing three things and then gaining a token yeah. essentially what most modes of this is going to be played as right um obviously as we talked about two at a giant there's a huge application there because you bounce two of your opponents and then you get to make a copy of two of you know your essentially best creatures yeah so that's really cool or if you're just playing once again on your own you just make whatever and then if you want to partner up with somebody or, around the table make or make have them, them a make friend. a copy you know yeah yeah Definitely good. Another useful mechanic, like, like you said, press the advantage or even dig yourself out of trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. And I, I, there's no targeting on this too, which is kind of interesting because hmm. it's they choose. So each foe returns a creature they control to its owner's hand. Right. So you can twist that into a way that could be bad for you. So, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. So yeah. like, if you're playing against like blink commanders, so, so on and so forth. You, you know, not what you want to do. Yeah, they might gain some advantage from that. So, but you could get them 
a copy of something anyway. That's true. But you'd rather make them spend their money to replay it. That's also true. Yeah, that's a good point. But Steve. like Eternal Witness, like, uh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, next we have Game Plan. So five and a blue sorcery assist. So again, somebody could make this as cheap as a single blue for you. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard in their library, then draws seven and exile it. So, this I mean, this is pretty much perfect on yeah. like the whole time whatever, I guess game plan. Uh, a lot of people play those type of effects, and they're always good. The problem has always been that you use all of your mana doing it, and yeah. then you're just like, well, now I can't do anything, and these other three people can do stuff before I can. Yep. Whereas this, it's just like, well, guys, we can either do this or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I guess, I guess that does not the way it works. Why? How do you? Another player can pay up to five colors on this spell. So, if somebody's got no hand, you could be like, "Dude, pay all f five of this or whatever." True. Like, so it's a lot of political talk before yeah. you even cast the spell. Yeah. Or if everybody's out, or say you're running a deck that's got like a Jinja Taxis or something, like, Ugh. you know, you could cast this and help everybody out to get rid of something like that. You know, that's true. If you're just pinned down with no hand, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is the kind of mechanic that you don't usually want to share with everybody. Or usually you, you must be prepared more than your opponents for it, yes. I guess. But here you're kind of relying on it. Well, not relying, but it'd be nice if somebody, you know, pitched two mana oh, at this. Yeah, helped you out. Yeah. Kind of curious. Yeah. Cool art. That That's, like, awesome artwork. Yeah. It's like an arena with, like, a mind. It reminds mind. me of Harry Potter. I yeah. don't know why. Like a Quidditch like, yeah. arena or something. Yeah, definitely. Then we've got a spell seeker. So two colors and a blue human wizard. Uh, this card is, I'm going to say, already bananas. <laughs> so 1-1, one, one. when Spellseeker enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost 2 or less, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Hmm. So what do I think of when I see this card? Counter spells. Nope. Ramp stuff. Cyclonic Rift. Oh god, Steve. <laughs> That's a good point. So yeah, it's, I mean, a lot of people are looking at this one for Legacy and Vintage as well, which yeah. they should. Yep. It's a really cool card. Um, there's a whole bunch of like meme names about it which i can't remember any of them right now but it's just like uh spell seeker mancer or whatever you want to say anyway yeah. i don't want to not do them justice but <laughs> really interesting artwork to it it looks very like off kilter like kind of like what is going on yeah, here she's like underwater or something it looks like but yeah. it doesn't look like it and i don't know it's cool it is cool it's i want to see this in foil i'm oh, sure yeah. it'll look really sweet it's a little muted um yeah. i did notice that right away Maybe if they would have brought the saturation of just the dad, I'd be a little bit more about it, but mm. it's still cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. I think I'm not a mud, like much of an instant sorcery player, but like that is obviously powerful. You know. Well, I think this is key for like Anala. Yeah. If you think about it, you make a copy of this, you get two spells with convert mass, mana cost two or less, and there are ways to keep doing that. Say, yeah. uh, Nabon once again. Say you're playing Nabon and Anala, then you've got three triggers of this, then you just get to find all these spells. Like, I mean, there's there's actually quite a bit at two or less in those oh, yeah. type of decks, especially like cantrip-wise. So yep. say you just need to wheel and deal and like start doing some cantrips, you can just go find three cantrips and potentially yeah. even cast them because, I mean, there are zero-cost spells. Yeah, and uh, it's a wizard too, which, like, they need any more help? Yeah, really they don't. I mean, yeah. I think it's funny that, like, the two biggest tribes on this set are like warriors and wizards. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Now I've got out of bound, out of bounds. I was trying to say it cool and then I messed up. <laughs> so three colors and a blue assist once again. I grabbed this one purely to kind of more or less talk about assist. As far as like a counter spell, I've run into this many, many times in Commander where there is something that the whole table needs countered. Yeah. So this is perfect in my opinion. Yeah. It. Looks like it costs four, but I doubt this is ever going to cost four if no. you're playing it right. Yep. You know, somebody's just like, I'm going to play Ula, or not Ulamog, I'm going to play Jenga Taxis. Like you just said, everybody's going to want to counter that guy. Yeah. So it's just like, I'll pay one blue, and then everybody's just like, I'll play a colorless blah, you know. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty cool spell. It's yeah. interesting. And once again, there's those homunculi. Yeah. I kind of like the uh, flavor text on this one too. The Warden's Watch for Illegal Tactics and Protect Spectators from the Occasional Rogue Fireball. Nice, yeah. So they're they're protecting the, the crowd. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Referees. And uh, they're out of bounds. It makes sense. And they've got like the little black and oh, white yeah, thing Oh yeah, the checkered shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's perfect all around, man. Oh gosh, that's super cool. Way to go, Wizards. Sports theme. I never thought I'd like it, but I'm all over yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my god. Okay, I want to talk about this one. <laughs> go for it. So, 
When this card got spoiled, I literally lost my mind because I have one application for it, essentially. So six colors, two black. Creature demon, flying, of course, 6-6. Six, six. Your opponents can't gain life, which is one of my favorite things to see on a card because mm -hmm. life gain always gets me down, uh, unless it's mine. At the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. So I, I, what, where do I want to put this, uh, Eric? Let me guess. Uh, Asphodel, Grey Merchant something? No, no, no. no, no what? No, what are you no. Do? Although that's an amazing application. Uh, what, what do you... Oh, Slimefoot? No, 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 no. no. What do you I, do? I am looking at Rakdos, Lord of Riots. Okay. This card in that deck is going to be stupid good. Mostly because of the cost reduction, so it doesn't have to come out at 8. Okay, yeah. But also because that deck is all about spreading out damage. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, you turn that... I ping you twice into four yeah, damage. Yeah, like four, yeah. it's just like it's so good. Mm. And cards like this surprise me because I think this is going to be one of those ones that it has limited application. But you just brought up a lot of really good ones. Um, and you know, Slimefoot's actually really good now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean, how often have we just been like whittled down by one at a time? Yep. And now it's just like that happened five <laughs> times this turn. Now, now do it another. Essentially, you, you just took ten from all these things. Like. <laughs> If you've watched any of our Popper to Power series, you know that's one of my favorite things to do, too. Yeah. So, like, Blood Artist is another great yeah, example of something that works amazing Jeez. with this. It, it's it's a really good card, and I'm kind of happy that it costs as much as it does because I don't think a lot of people are going to be necessarily, like, you know, try, flying down here to pick up one up. So yeah. hopefully I can pick up a foil yeah. fairly cheap because it's so cool. You know, I, I always liked, what is it, Cursed... Cursed Talisman from like Shards and mm -hmm. I think it does the same thing but it's white black and that I always love that sort of effect like you double down on it but yeah. you could just like like KO somebody so fast with something like this and I, I love not attacking so yeah yeah <laughs> it's yeah. perfect for me and like you said the the kind of Erebos effect on there too is just yeah. like extra super gravy you know yeah. oh too cool great art yep uh, next we have Stunning Reversal, three in a black instant. Next time you would lose the game this turn, instead draw seven cards, your life be becomes one, and exile. So, pretty interesting. I mean, if you think about, like, there are cards that work really well with this. For example, there's that uh, Last Stand card from the original Zendikar, the one that are, it might not be original Zendikar, but anyway, if your life total is one and you have no board, okay. you essentially win the game okay. at the beginning of your upkeep. So you cast this when somebody goes to swing out at you you're at one and then you just win the game on the next upkeep yeah that's a very like you've got to have magical christmas land with all the right cards in the right places but that's just an example of something you can do with this yeah, yeah. also it's kind of like a it's not teferi's uh, the whole blink thing it's not that but it's as close to a black version as we can get mm -hmm. with a instant speed effect type thing going yeah on here. it's like a, a demon's angel's grace like yeah you know, obviously you could just get staff and end after this. That's but, true. Um, but I mean, at least you've got a chance. Right. And, and if you have a way to gain life after this. Yeah. And especially if somebody like clobbers you and swings out, like uses their last bit. And then you just say, psych, I'm at one untap, kill you. Like, yeah, it's done its duty. Like, exactly. Definitely neat. Cool art too. I, or I you could like just that. switch life total to somebody. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <Ugh. sighs> you could do that without even being threatened of death. Oh, yeah. If you think about it that way, like, yeah. just like, oh, I've got four mana open. Okay, I'm going to make my life total one, draw seven cards, then switch Stop. life totals with you. What is it? Soul, uh, soul. There's, it's like a staff or something. It's weird artwork. It's, yeah. a, there's a few. There's a few of them, yeah. But that's, that's the one that comes to my mind, too. Yeah. Soul Exchanger or yeah, something. I yeah, I think that's right. Interesting. Uh, next we have Ver Vertus's Maneuver. <laughs> Uh, two and a black sorcery for each player choose friend or foe each friend returns a creature card from graveyard to hand each foe sacrifices a creature they control so this one's perfect in my opinion but that's just because it costs three and it's a sorcery speed spell which is fine but like i love edict effects yep. and this is like an edict effect that gives you an upside yep. i mean i paid three for this on the other side where it's just sacking creatures yeah so i mean pretty strong mm -hmm. it needs assist yeah <laughs> Gosh, that would suck. <laughs> hey, pay for my spell. Guess what? You're a foe. <laughs> um, Got a Mind Blade Render. Yes. So, a colorless and a black. Azura, I think, Azra? Azra? Azra, Azra Warrior. 1-3. Whenever your opponents are dealt combat damage, if any of that damage was dealt by a warrior, you draw a card and lose one life. So, pretty, pretty, this is more tribal motivated, of course. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if you think about it, 
they are definitely pushing like five color warriors and this fits right into that deck oh yeah there already is a really good four color warrior list with um the chick that came from the four color commanders uh saskia yeah saskia yeah. so i mean this just fits right into there i mean if yeah. you want to add blue you go to five whatever interesting card interesting artwork these creatures yeah. are kind of cool like they're they remind me of the Draenei, is Draenei, that correct? Yeah. From uh, World of Warcraft. I mean, they're very close, yeah. <laughs> in yeah, my opinion. A... Their horns grow differently, but yeah. I mean, that's about it, really. Yeah, definitely cool. And I like this. This is kind of a middle ground for a color that kind of doesn't get it. You know, you're dealing damage, which black sure can do. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you're dealing with draw and pay a life, which is like the greed, half of a greed thing. You know, yeah. it's neat. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, next we have Thrasher Brute. So three and a black ogre or orc warrior. Excuse me, four three. Whenever Thrasher Brute or another warrior enters the battlefield under your your team's control, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, like you said, just kind of more tribal stuff. Tribal uh, tribal warrior synergy. Um, again, this is awesome for the two headed giant aspect of Battle Bond. Um, you know, you could pretty much just say, hey, here's some fixing, which there's a good amount of mana fixing and stuff like. Here, take all the warriors, and I'm gonna just, you know, like do something else. But you could, you can handle all of this warrior awesome sauce, and I could have a few of them or whatever if they're in my colors, and just get some some extra synergy there. So pretty cool, um, an interesting uncommon. I think I'd probably pick him if I had a bunch of warriors, you yeah, know, in a draft or something. To. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so people are losing their minds once again about this card, and it is deserved. So Thrilling Encore, so four colors and a black, instant speed, which is what pushes this over the edge. Put onto the battlefield under your control all creature cards and all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Yeah. That is really, really, really good. And like you said, Eric, this card will fit into every mono black or black deck black in deck. general yeah. from here to the end of time. Yep. Honestly. In my opinion, they should have made this like three black and two colors or yeah. something like that because it it shouldn't be in a black white deck. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like okay, easy board wipes, easy recursion. Yeah, Blah, there we go. And you know? really, yeah, you know, you think this this does, in my opinion, require that like heavy uh, unless they're looking to just spread that around. I totally get it. There isn't some like this is just you know they revived a guy. Welcome to the winning team. Like. Yeah. This isn't like uh, you've got to sacrifice your whole board and get it back, and like you've you've suffered a great board wipe. So here's your here's your you know uh, your karma to return everything. Like this is just turn the tables. This and something like Gerard is just gonna be absolutely insane. Um, like uh, it's so powerful and it's just so like clean and efficient for what it does, and it should have never been printed. Yeah, uh, this this will be a, a big hit from now until forever. I don't think it'll be banned. Uh, like the one thing they usually consider is is it like prolific and is it oppressive yeah i don't know if this is this clearly can win you the game so it might be oppressive i think it could also be prolific mm -hmm. but i think the fact that almost anybody can cast this if it's in your identity like you're good you know i just keep thinking queen marchesa that's yeah. where i want this yeah. just because I, I run so many effects that say destroy all permanents like imagine doing this after that oh yeah and it's just like well now you guys have nothing and i have everything that everybody just lost like, so buy your homeward paths right now yeah really definitely an awesome card that i think will influence commander for a while yep awesome super cool um so now we are into our partners uh, no this no. is actually a standalone so there's oh, yeah. a few standalone legendaries in the set which is cool because you know they need those yeah like i don't think everything should be a partner right um so we've got nigella <laughs> the blade blossom which is a cool title yeah so two colors and a red so super efficient ca casting cost um it's legendary creature human warrior three two whenever a warrior attacks you may have its controller create a one one white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking awesome and then the most ridiculous part about this card is you can pay one of each color and tap all attacking creatures they gain trample life link and haste until any turn after this phase there's an additional combat phase activates this ability only during combat oh my god so there are plenty of ways to abuse this because we already have all of them i mean we've done this before the mana cost is a little bit restrictive on this one because usually it's just you got to pay red. So there's things like Savage Vent Bond, so on and so forth, that mm -hmm. you can just continually pay that mana into it. Right. But 
I'm sure somebody here somewhere has already figured this out, and yeah. you can just have infinite combat phases, and it's with warriors, and you're creating 1-1 one -one tokens, and it's just like... <sighs> Red Shell. Yep. Crystal Quarry. Bam. Oh. Um, oh. Dude. Yeah, that that's a pretty sweet card. So, well, fortunately, I mean, it is kind of like one board wipe and they're done kind of yeah. thing like one cyclonic or one aetherize and it's just like good luck yeah. right. yep. um sudden spoiling would also work yep. so on and so forth but at the same time it's just like oh my gosh yeah you swing at that once and it's just like well i'm probably you know maybe, maybe trample is the least and maybe well yeah trample I, I don't know i think trample's the most in my opinion not lifelink what if you got a whole bunch of like two two warriors or something like uh, i guess that's true but i mean I don't know. I guess when I think of it, I th I automatically am just like, well, they're going to have like the artifact dude that puts plus one, plus one counters on it. They're going to have the other dude that just gives everyone plus one, plus one. The lords and, and stuff. Yeah, there yeah. are a ton of warriors out there. Like, there's the cycle from cons. I don't even know if they were thinking about oh, all this. Yeah. yeah, that give plus one, the plus oh, and plus zero, plus one. Chief of the one. scale and chief of the blade or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. just like there are so many, like, because the only reason I know about all this is because I tried to build well I did build a warrior deck with Saskia at some point and it's just like there's already a lot of stuff in here and now it's just like let's add this and like a unified commander that you can play all five colors with although I don't really know how many blue warriors, warriors that are... you really want to play but I'm sure there's at least one or two Yeah, yeah. but regardless there are spells that you want to play like <laughs> and so on and so forth that just like add that much more pressure to this deck yeah that card's sweet yeah it's it's crazy the foils of this are going to be absolutely beautiful oh, yeah. i bet so like just looking at that artwork the the hues of the clouds and everything like that it's it's gorgeous yeah. i wish that it was more card less i mean more art less card but i know that's impossible i mean they yeah. may have even had to shrink this one a little bit for all that text Jeez, yeah. <laughs> that is super super cool yeah yeah beautiful <sighs> too cool yeah and now we've got a bonus round which is another sports thing which is really cool so colors two red uh sorcery until end of turn whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that player copies it and may choose new targets for that copy mm. So I go back to like wheelhouse decks. Um, I need to foil this for my Locust God deck because that's just gonna get crazy, you know, like r automatically. Yeah. Um, I was really hoping that we got to see these two as a pair. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, I think they're just like background characters or whatnot. But I, I wanted to see a spell heavy partner duel that wasn't the, the Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers yeah. So, but what can you what can you do? Yeah, definitely. That's a sweet card, especially like you said, if you're ready to like. Mizzix somebody or Arjun somebody or whatever and just like churn through your deck there are so many like storm pieces in this set oh yeah for commander which is just like why are we trying are we to like this? build this up <laughs> yeah yeah we'll get to one of the artifacts that wow <laughs> uh next we have Cor Corvath's Fury so four and a red sorcery for each player choose friend or foe each friend discards all cards in their hand then draws that many cards plus one Corvath's Fury deals damage to each foe equal to the number of cards in their hand yeah, that's also pretty good, especially if you just need to, like, help your team and draw, you know. Yeah. Yeah, good. Pretty solid. Uh, you so, like this one. <laughs> okay, I'll read it. Stolen Strategy. These are pretty new to me. I haven't been up on the spoilers, but... Four and a red. Enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of each opponent's library. Okay, until end of turn, you must cast non-land cards from among them, uh, and you may spend mana as though they were any color. Okay, so, like... Yeah, pretty good. You're just trying to flip off the top of somebody's deck and play something sweet with your mana, essentially. So, so you just play this inside a tolly? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, super cool. But um, yours is mine. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. You know, the last thing most people are prepared for is getting their favorite, like, busted card played against them. Oh, so, yeah. Then that's that's a, a greedy moment when you can just be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you, know, you know, choke on this, I guess, right? Yep. So next... We've got a Bramble Sovereign, so this card, I lost my mind when I saw yeah. it. So two colors, two green, Dryad 4-4. Four, four. Whenever another non-token creature are, enters the battlefield, you may pay to pay a colorless and a green. If you do, that creature's controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. Yep. So Mirror Works for creatures. Or like Minion Reflector. Yeah, Minion yeah. Reflector is another one. Well, I green guess that's probably a better comparison. Yeah, it's, it's all the same. 
Oh, it's that's so really cool. good. Beautiful art. Yes. Um, I think that'll be a really expensive uh, foil. I wish this was legendary. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, it'd be insane. Everybody would be playing that. Yeah. Super. That is an awesome card. That is totally worth the Mythic slot. Yeah. Um, man, that'll be cool. Yep. Uh, this is more your wheel. I'll read once it. again. We have Grothama the All Devouring. So three and two green, a 10 8 legendary creature worm. Other creatures have. Whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight this worm. So <laughs> all creatures have this. When this creature dies, Groth, Grothma leaves the battlefield. So you can even blink it, you exile it, whatever. Each tar or each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grothma this turn by sources they controlled. So this is um, kind of like greater good. Everybody swings and deals the worm a bunch of damage. I mean, you could play it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's the way I would play this. Yeah. And imagine it's kind of like a mini sack outlet. So I'm thinking throw a bunch of sapperlings at it. They're uh, they're one ones at yeah. least, right? So you throw t uh, eight one ones at it. And it, well, I guess it doesn't even have to be. Yeah, a creature you could deal a million damage to this and draw a million cards. Yeah, so pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is. I, there's got to be a way to make this like really, really weird, don't you think? I mean, there. I can see it already. Yeah. Like, if you some like it, it can also stop your opponents from tapping. So, yeah. like, say they have a hundred hundred, they can't attack you. Because then they'll they'll, they'll draw themselves. themselves out. Yeah. So I mean, like, oh well, it's gosh. a may, right? You may have it fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. which is a shame. Um, yeah. Because I was thinking about that too. Is like, there's got to be a good way to, like, instead of everybody turning on this worm, like, you know, just make it work somehow. Like, obviously, if, uh, it's, oh man, it's so weird. Yeah. Such an odd card, but super cool. Um, I'd like to play a ten eight for five, like. <laughs> Even if it just like allows everybody to team up against me, yeah. And imagine if you are a partner in well, a two yeah. giant, you're never gonna fight him, yeah. Unless you true. absolutely need to, like. Well, I mean, but that brings up a good point. Like, if you need to, you can. You can, right? So, I, 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 uh, weird, weird creature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Super cool. I want a foil just cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we've got a generous patron. So two colors and a green. When generous patron enters the battlefield, support two. Uh, whenever you put one or more ca counters on a creature you don't control, draw a card. Awesome. So there's a ton of cards that support this. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, once again, I wish it was legendary. That would make it even more interesting, but what can you do? Artwork's awesome. Yeah. Love this guy. Yeah, super cool. Uh, the crowd goes wild. Woo! X and a green sorcery assist. Uh, so they can support X, put X counters on target creatures. Each creature with a plus one plus one counter gains trample its own to turn. So a run effect. It's a yeah. little jump through hoopy, but yeah, it's okay. Again, if you can convince the board, not not too shabby. Yep. Reminds me of like Nabu in yeah. episode one at the end I, of the movie. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, this card. So Archon of Valor's Reach. So four colors, a green and a white. Archon five six flying vigilant trample, which is pretty good. As Archon of Valor's Reach enters the battlefield, choose artifact, enchantment, instant sorcery, planeswalker. Players can't cast spells of the chosen type. Mm. So that's a really good shutdown card. Yeah. Um, I obviously, most of the time, especially in green-white, will be choosing sorceries so no one can board wipe. That would be yeah. where I would go with this, but cool. Interesting. Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Especially keyword soup on a big guy, you know, with yeah. a good effect. So. Uh, oh my god. Last one standing. So one, a black and a red sorcery. Choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. This is probably my favorite, like, restrictive board wipe because there's, they always try and push, like, the envelope with, like, low cost board wipes, and it's always just terrible. It's just like, destroy all the creatures that are four or greater, which is okay. Yeah. But something like this is just like, who knows what's going to happen? You could leave the worst creature on the entire board. It's just like, there's a zero one Eldrazi token. Good luck, sir. Yeah. Or you could leave your creature. Your creature. You know, yeah. there's just so much possibility with this. Of course, you could leave the worst creature on the board, but. Depending on the board, the chance of that happening is so little. And I l would love for those type of you know encounters. It's just like, I'm going to board wipe to get rid of everything. Oh no, I left yeah. that one thing that's going to kill us all. Yeah. Well, or kill me because of what I've done, right? Like, oh, there's that consecrated sphinx that should have died. Yeah. <laughs> and like you were talking about earlier, this card pairs well with the 
like the black instant the, return yeah. everything. Yeah. Ugh. So for like nine mana, you turn the board upside down and give somebody one thing, or just keep all of your stuff and get all their stuff. Yeah, you like, probably just win the game at that yeah. point. Okay. Yeah. An awesome, awesome combo. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I could see this being being another nuisance. Not, yeah. I don't think many people play red black, but man, I do. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely a good one. Uh. So this is another warrior kind of tribal synergy. So a colorless, a black, and a green Azur odds, odds maker. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, you may discard a card. If you do, choose a creature. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, this turn you draw two cards. Hmm. So another car card draw synergy for warriors, which is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Nothing too crazy, though. Mm -mm. Oh, now we're getting to artifacts. So we've got victory chimes. So three colorless, untapped victory chimes, victory chimes during each other player's untapped step. Tap at a a player of your choice adds a colorless mana. Just wacky. Yeah. And fits into like every artifact deck from here to the end of time. Group front or group front. Group hug decks rejoice. Yes. Um Sentinel Tower for wow. artifact. Wow. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell is cast during your turn, Sentinel Tower deals one dam or excuse me, deals damage to any target equal to one plus the number of Instant and sorcery spells cast before that spell this turn. Oh. So, like you said, this is your storm, buddy. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I've seen people talk about this in like Aether Flux Reservoir. And oh God, don't even say that. So you're just like double whammying all this stuff, oh, and just man. it's super cool. It's a little odd, but it's like why not? You know, you're kind of charging up. I just think of like the interaction in like once again my Locust God deck. Like there are there are times where I cast twenty something spells in yeah. that deck, and it's yeah. just like. Boosh, 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 boosh. Yeah, striking people for like 17, 18, 19, 20 damage. Like, yeah. Turnabout. Oh, no. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Did it need to be printed? Probably not. Probably not, but here it is. So <laughs> yep. pick them up. And I put the whole cycle in here, so if you want to flip through them while we're talking yeah. about them. These lands are amazing. Um, everybody's going to want them for Commander, of course. We've previously talked about them already, so I just kind of put them up here just to, once again, show the full art without the weird, like, cut off. Yeah, them being flayed, like, um, split out. Yeah. I think anybody's going to want these. Yep. I don't think they'll be that expensive at first, but later on, they will be very expensive. Yeah. So I think people need to get the copies they want now, which, unfortunately, for someone like me, is, like, I want every one I can get, yeah. and I cannot wait for the enemy cycle to come out oh if it gosh. ever does. I'm sure they will. I wish this would have been an enemy cycle, because that yeah. would have been better for Everybody. overall. Yeah. But whatever, we've got what we got. I love the artwork on that one. Yeah. That's probably my favorite artwork. It's just so... Uh, for me, it's... I, I really like the Luxury Suite, and then the, the Sea of Clouds, or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, they have some fantastic concepts for this one, I'd yes. say. Yes. Um, so, now we're breaking into our partnered commanders essentially so first up we've got will kenrith uh four colors two blue um we've previously talked about this so i don't know if i'm going to go through the full list here mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting for spell heavy decks if you are looking to build something like that i don't necessarily know this is like the perfect commander for it yeah. but it's a it's an interesting option i would do this more casually yeah. personally mm -hmm. but still interesting if you want to flip through that one sure. just to show it off so then we got ronan kenrith another interesting pair i'm guessing these are siblings i mean yeah. that's why the way i look at it but i i don't know everybody's turning into lovers in the yeah. set so Could be husband wife or something yeah who knows um <laughs> interesting once again i love the effects like line up and yeah. that's mainly what we talked about in the previous episode when we talked about these guys so i don't want to tread over the same territory kind of thing yeah and interesting i think you think you're right maybe not the best choice i'm happy there's two more planeswalkers that can be commanders correct i yeah. i don't know if i'm happy that uh, they play on their own. I wouldn't do that. I don't know if I'd put them together, but it's cool that they try it. You know? I wish one of them cost five. And and one of them costs, one, yeah, I think six. that would work a little bit better because, like, taking two turns to get this like weird thing that's not even really that powerful online. Yeah, not as great. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. It's it's cool, but a little off. I'm glad they did it. You know. So these two, we've once again touched on these before, but like this pair is amazing. Um, it's probably my favorite pair out of the entire set so far um being able to gain the life here create the tokens if you want to flip to the other one real quick and then sacrifice them with this effect essentially you come out ahead each time because you can just like sack a token gain two tokens sack two tokens gain three tokens or you know well i guess it doesn't work that way but you can always like manipulate it draw a bunch of cards gain a bunch of life put a bunch of plus one plus one counters on this guy 
I wish he had some flying, which would be great for evasion, but overall, really cool pair. I want to put this black uh, demon in basically any sacrifice oriented oh, yeah. deck, so it's just good. Yeah, super cool. Uh, so we have Sylvia, Sylvia? Bright Spear. Yep. So Human Knight, partner with a dragon, right? Yep. Double strike dragons uh, get double strike. Yeah. Super cool. Maybe not on its own, but... Then we've got the other guy, yep. which is Corvath Bright Flame. Mm -hmm. So five colors in red, partner with, of course, and then Flying Haste. Knights, your team control, have Flying and Haste. So like a white, red, dragon yeah. rider knight. I deck. think it's, it's once again interesting because we've got the lovers of the demon and the angel, and then we've got two iconic character types that have always fought against each other, yeah. like working together as a team, which I think is very interesting. There was a dual deck, right? Wasn't it? Knights vs. Dragons? Something like that. I think there was, yeah. Super cool. I love the art. Both those artworks are fantastic. Yep. Um, so, everybody, we talked yeah. about these. Pier, you know, you've got like an imaginary creature, you know, and then you've got Toothy, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, kind of interesting. Um, a little different. I think people are giving some guff on this creature pair right they don't really care for the artwork which yeah. i don't really understand what they're saying but whatever it doesn't yeah. really matter there's of course alternate artwork too for this so that could be you know, wizards has a tendency when they make alternate artwork you generally get one set of the artwork that's just like okay well they put this together in a rush yeah hmm. at least it feels that way to me and this might be that the, the, this version that we've seen yeah. here yeah so okay. well we'll see it'll, it'll be curious and i guess i did learn about that yesterday so yeah. <laughs> zinder split and we can see that here split. actually because these are the promo versions so yeah. we'll have a different take on this artwork most likely yeah so partner with our, our uh okan eye of chaos combat flip coin if you until you lose whenever you win draw a card and this guy says whenever a player wins a flip double this guy's power and toughness till end of turn so and uh you just do it at combat as well so yeah. you get a free trigger there yep awesome it's it's interesting mm -hmm. um as far as red blue goes again this is very much outside of what you normally do in those that coloring pair so it's it's gonna be cool i don't know i need to play with this one in order to yeah. really understand it um well not understand it but really see it in action yeah i i don't know i, I think a lot of times people are blind to the card flip or coin flip cards yeah and that makes this one hard for me to grasp I, kn yeah. I know a few that supplement it and stuff but i don't really know a ton of them well like you were saying yesterday like pick up your character's thumb now yeah big time <laughs> definitely uh, or Karak's other thumb. Other thumb, yeah. <laughs> For all your unstable players out there still, right? <laughs> Definitely cool. Uh, Vit, Vit Virtress, the Veiled. Which we talked about these guys, I think, too. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly which ones we had talked about, but once again, interesting pair. I don't necessarily care for either of these creatures on yeah. their own. Um, They'd be really know. good into it, a giant. Yeah. And maybe that's what's going to happen. I don't know if you want to flip to the next one, but... Like, I think a lot of these are going to end up being specifically to add a giant. So, like, you you build yourself a set, essentially. Yeah. You know, like a just two like, decks. Yep. And then whenever a two-headed giant league comes up, you're just like, well, I'm set up for this. I just need a partner to play yeah. the other deck. Which, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's interesting. It's different. Yeah. It, it definitely, I think Curious is kind of the way to approach yeah. pretty much all of those guys. Like, um so now we are into reprint territory. So of course, Spirit Dancer, this card's interesting, always has been. It got pricey there for a little while. It did. It's not anymore, which is whatever. I don't really care for it at rare, personally, but that's just because I'm greedy and I want it to be an uncommon, so I never find it at rare. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this has always gonna, been a good card. Aura spells, draw, draw you a card, it gets plus two, plus two, free aura attached to it. It's just a very weak, I guess thing going on in Commander Auras have always been like, uh, oh, this is very glass cannon ish. Yeah. Like it'll just get destroyed really quick. So yeah. not my favorite. No. Not not bad, but not great. Oh. Land tax. I love that they use this artwork. You yep. said it was a judge promo. It right? was a judge foil, yeah. Yeah. I a lot of people need this card, me being one of them. I already, I have one copy, you know, I don't even know where it is. But I I want this in foil because it looks yep. so cool. That'll be a pricey foil, I think, yes. Steve. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mangara of Corundor. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting reprint. Is he valuable or not anymore? He used to be okay. kind of valuable because he was played in Legacy a lot. Now not so much. He is every once in a while, but he's not not that popular. Hmm. 
Um, oh. This one's not too popular either, right? Oh, yeah, th this card sucks. Yeah. Don't pick up any copies so I can have them all. Yeah. Especially uh, the foils. <laughs> yes. True name, of course. I think this is the first foil print of this card. Yep. Uh, if you get this, keep it. Don't let somebody swindle you out of it, because yeah. it is one of the best creatures for basically any type of like quick format, in my yeah. opinion. Like 1v1, this card is a monster. Yep. Um, Tribal Merfolk actually really likes playing this. I found that out the other day because I put one of mine in my Tribal Mer Merfolk deck, and it's been a lot of fun actually. Yeah, great card. Oh, so so good. Glad we finally have another chance to get this. <laughs> that isn't a Commander Thirteen reprint. Whoa. Is the whole cycle of these in here, Steve? No, just this oh. one, which is unfortunate. But this is probably the best one. Yeah. Um, you know, this or the black one. Obviously, the red one has huge application because it's being used in a lot of places and it's really expensive. But yeah. Between the ones that they could have reprinted for Commander, I think this is perfect. Yeah. Um, this card, if you have not played with it, you need to play with it. Mystic Confluence is probably one of the my favorite blue spells that they printed after Cyclonic Rift. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start doing Comparing like an Comparing it there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh god, this card. And now we can get foils? Yep. Which there is a Judge promo foil. Oh, I don't know if you were aware of that. I, I wasn't, no. Um, but... Now there's a way to get a little bit cheaper foils. Yeah, so. not be a judge. Yep. Good choice. Tides about Tyrant. Always been an interesting card. Cool new art. Yeah, really cool That's new sweet. art, actually. I'd Very like to cool. see this in foil. Yeah. Uh, boy. Well, Thank goodness. Sore Temptation. Um, another one of my favorite cards. <laughs> yes. Another, And they kept the original art, which yep. I think is fantastic. Th this card is so good, and it's, it's disappeared in our groups, I think, yep. because nobody has it anymore. Because yep. it's had, like... A print maybe I think I have one copy yeah that's it yeah. and it's it's such a good like you said especially like late game you get down to the wire and you just take control take of whatever and then just finish your opponent off and they usually cannot do anything about it because they're just like I can't fight a kill spell this is yeah. so crazy I can't fight a kill spell you or know? you write a replication it and then take oh, everybody's God, don't good even stuff. Say that. <laughs> this card messed up standard when I used to play and it's just like it's I'm happy to see this return because it's gonna it's gonna make people play more responsibly like yeah oh definitely pick this up even if you don't think you want a, this card it's it's so worth it you know yep. oh wonderful and here's another one yep. same deal this card I play it in every mono black deck that I have. Mm -hmm. Even some duels, not so many. It kind of loses a lot of power, of course, just like any kind, of, any kind of like cage sun effect does. Yeah. Um, but Nirkana Revenant, the fact that you can actually finish your opponents off with this creature as well by making all that mana, like I've had it happen. Yep. And it's interesting creature types like Vampire Shade. Like this automatically fits into a lot of tribal strategies for vampires because it's just well, I'll double all my black and get this four four. Right. Doesn't really matter. Um, but once again. Mono black like my Erebos deck has not missed. Our, it, it loves this card. Yeah, good reprint. Another <laughs> one that's crept up and uh, fits in that strategy, like you said. And yeah, here's another one. <laughs> Diabolic Intent, of course. Um, yeah, this has been harder to get a hold of. Yeah, it spiked pretty hard not too long ago, just because I think people finally realized, especially in Commander, that it was a really good card. Because there are so many decks that just like churning creatures into their graveyard, and obviously I'm I'm a huge advocate for that strategy. So really cool artwork too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chain Lightning, a good reprint. It's been reprinted recently as well on Commander or Masters Twenty Five. So it's good. Just uh, make sure when you're playing against somebody that they realize this is Chain Lightning and not Lightning, lightning Bolt. Bolt. We've had that come up so many times in the one v one finals. It's not even funny. The art is so similar too. Yeah. Like it's yeah yeah. I mean yeah, I think careful. I've even made the mistake before, but. It's yeah. It's tough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, this oh. one we can skip. Uh, <laughs> doubling season, of course. Uh, if you didn't hear the news, this card, get it now. Get your copies if you're lucky enough yeah. to get a foil. Go buy a lotto ticket. Also, we've um, uh, we've experienced the doubling season reprint before, yeah. and everybody was like, "Oh, it's gonna be a thirty dollar card from here tomorrow," and then it's just like, "Nope, still seventy five dollars." Yeah. I imagine this will go down to about fifty dollars. I think this one will be a huge price memory thing. Yeah. And I don't think you're going to get a copy cheaper than that, no. unfortunately. I don't no. think this is going to be one that's just like, well, it got reprinted, so now it's $30. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work like that. I can see the cards I compare this to are like Berserk and mm -hmm. uh, Show and Tell from yep. C uh, Conspiracy 2. Like, even those, they did come down pretty reasonable. They're still like 18 20 bucks. I think you're right. I think this one will maybe bottom out at 30 um, If people are willing to trade them or sell them, like man doubling season if you don't have one keep at least one if you have odds are you will need another one at some point because it's just so powerful beautiful art oh yep. man so great 
Mag Magus of the Candelabra, of course, kind of a curious yeah, uh not so much to say here but yeah. it's it's cool it's cool yeah and then uh rare and same art oh it's eight bar muse another good reprint i think this card is at like 22 bucks or it something was at crazy. 30 and now it's gone down okay bit, so yeah this card again is nuts it fits in a lot of colors just because it's green it's our only effect that does this now because the other one got banned profit of crew fix is banned yeah. right yeah. um oh, it's great and they kept the original art yep um oh so great Vigor, another perfect choice. It's gotten expensive over the years it because has. it fits into a lot of key plus one plus one counter strategies and so on and so forth. And it's it's a cycle which people like, so that hurts its availability and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and obviously it's a game changer and uh, another great one. And it's disappeared, I think, because yep. people can't get it. I remember Kylie was looking for one for like something, Edgar. and he couldn't. I held him one, and like, or, or no, we we didn't. I think we tried to, and we couldn't find it. I mean, it was it's just so hard to find. Gashra claim. Perfect reprint. I can't, you know, another source of foils of this one. I'm tired of explosive vegetation, so yeah. this is great. This is great. And these people constantly ask for this card. It's like, we don't have it. Pe yep. People have been on this train for years, and there hasn't been a reprint. We do not have this card, and now we can yep. finally get it again. So, uh, greater good with new new art. Or no, there's a judge foil art of this. Sw uh, Sawyer was telling me. Okay. And then they changed the flavor text away from a Frankenstein uh, quote to a uh, Gerard quote. Yep. Probably to supplement Return to Return to Ravnica coming to you. Yep. In October. <laughs> um, Mycos and Gladys, of course. I'll be looking for a foil of this yeah. because, like, the foils of this are super expensive and yeah. this is, like, perfect. So. Yep. Uh, if you're running artifacts and you want to turn everything into an artifact, perfect. Get it. Get a foil. It's a mythic. Kind of sucks. But yeah. it's a great card. Uh, Mind's Eye. It's like these two should just swap. That should have been rare. This should have been mythic. But I, yeah. hate, I would hate it that way too. Oh, God, it's like I want Mind's Eye. I want a million of them. I want Mind's Eye to be like a five dollar rare again. Yeah. I want to see because I think the only other foil of this version is from like a specialty product, mm -hmm. and I'm not a fan of that foil. So I want to see if this is, like Battle Bond's got regular foil with this art. Yeah, I'm sure. It will. Um, ugh, a perfect another perfect reprint. And now we're back to Arena Rector. Yeah. So unfortunately, the closing is going to be a little tight here because I got to get going in like two minutes. Um, as far as like notable reprints that we didn't get images of, I don't think there's that much. You can definitely check it out yourself on Mythic Spoiler or whatever spoiler website you use. There were a few uncommons that I saw briefly glancing through it while you know we were over here talking, basically. Um, but overall, amazing set, I would say. Yes, um, we've had a lot of people. Of course, some of the big stuff got spoiled, and then more big stuff and medium stuff got spoiled, and people are like, I'd like to pre-order this, you know. Yeah. Um, I need seven boxes. Oh. Just to hype the shop a little bit, if you are available, we have two events. One on the second, and then one on the third. Uh, for Battle Bond, both at noon, kind of a sealed thing. You get six packs of the set, and a, and a pack with one foil of the partner set each. So you both kind of get that character to play with and put in your deck. Um, just, it should be super, super cool. I was going to say, just as a quick aside... Um, they have made this kind of awkward just because of those two foils like how do you determine who gets what and whatnot like you just choose yeah but i mean i i could definitely see like two people playing together that don't know each other like oh yeah pairing, and like... it's just like well i want both of those well i want both of those yeah well i guess we got half of it and it's just like then you got to trade gotta against your it. other person yeah like uh, that's I mean, a good point Steve. if it sounds i know it sounds crazy but it's almost like they should have just put doubles at this point in there or even just put them in a blind pack and you say here's one for you here's one yeah, for you that would have worked really well too yeah uh, they've done obviously this is new so you can't really fault them too much you know this is the first time they're trying this so you can't really just be like well this is really stupid why'd you do this blah, 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 blah. you know like yeah. normal people do but i don't know i, I... the last thing i want is a pre-release kit for battle bond just give us packs give us this extra cool promo stuff and call it good yeah. like that's where we're a okay, I think. So yeah, I, I don't even think they needed to do the promos, in my opinion. Yeah. Like I think that the fact that if you find one in the pack, you're gonna get the second one is enough for me. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah, it loses that chance of getting the ridiculous foil that you want, but at the same time, it doesn't really create that controversy where it's just like, yeah. well, we got the planeswalkers. Who wants them? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, hopefully, you, no one runs into that situation. Like I'm. I guess saying to be cautious like if you can go with somebody that you know like a friend that might be the way to do this which is once again unfortunate because yeah. it's just like 
that kind of puts like people that don't necessarily have somebody free that or day your group to, is three or something yeah you know? it makes it awkward which is yeah. kind of like why does this have to be awkward? yeah that's so. true that's a good point but we'll see what happens i'm sure it'll go fine i mean it's coming up what on the second or something like that second of june and third of june so yep. and then the set itself comes out on the eighth um with boxes available msrp is four dollars yep uh <laughs> As Steve mentioned, this is like Commander Masters. Commander Masters, and it's affordable, and everybody's going to go nuts, and I hope they don't have, like, a shortage, like, it's gone, like, Unstable was. Pre-order you know? your boxes now! Yeah, so, we'll Whack see. the inflatable arm guy. That's right. I probably made the camera go out of focus a million times. It looks good. Oh, cool. For anyway, once. <laughs> I gotta go. I hope you guys really like the set. I hope you really like our review of the set, and uh, we will be making so many Commander deck techs again. Yeah. We'll never get a break, Eric. No, we won't. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see you later. We've talked about it. Yeah, thank you.